That's the Indonesian army running around town. I met somebody who met somebody who met somebody who knew of a meeting going on of um, um, independence, pro-independence people who were uh, worried for their safety and we were invited to talk to them in a banana grove. It was actually a meeting of um, leaders from quite a wide area. People had come up to 40 or 50 kilometres apparently. And I wasn't going to film at first because it was possibly dangerous for these people but then in the end they actually asked me to film so I got a few shots of the people. And um, they offered to take us on a tour of encampments in the hills of people who were hiding for fear of their safety, Valentil supporters and Valentil people. So we went on a big trek into the hills. On this. <laughs> on this. On this. Shook hands with everybody in the camp. Yeah. <laughs> that or I just barged in on a soccer game. On this. From there. From Yep, this is where pretty much most of the men and young men were up in the hills. Living in uh, fairly basic living conditions, to say the least. And uh, I was um, on the trek with um, Sue and Michael Newman and Trevor, who spoke, um, I think it's Tet, I'm not sure, but he spoke to this guy who then spoke to the, the people in the camp. Times of war that women and the men have to split and they just have to make do. Untuk menghindari kematian. He said that even in April they were, they were starting to leave the KK in the large cities. And up until the 11th, most of these people stayed like in Ratao, below. Um, but then with the 11th, they started to make plans to um, dis uh, disperse because they knew that if the military came there, then there could be many deaths. Mm -hmm. And so in order to prevent a lot of deaths, they decided to spread out into the, into the hills. <laughs> They already know how to vote, they know about the election. The, the problem is that they don't know about uh, approaching the village or approaching the KK and getting there. He says they're still afraid to go into the town to vote, and he knows this is their, their opportunity. He knows that this is very important. Some people hiding south of, or southeast of, southwest of Bayo Bay, and so when they go in the militia, that they have to cross the road to the militia area, the headquarters almost, and then um, these people, they're, they're afraid that the militia will be attacked. <laughs> On the 30th, if there's still terror and intimidation by the militia, they won't be able to, to go into the town. Mm -hmm. If we think that there's lots of militia and lots of military, we think the situation's bad, he said it's going to be just better for us to stay here and not go. All of their efforts have been for independence, and that's been everything people have wanted. Okay, beautiful. Photo. And off we went to another camp. It was very hot, but um, still green. This man was one of our guides.
More men and young men. Mereka adalah takut apakah nanti mereka turun ke kota itu tidak ada teror dan diminasi ancaman. Ini yang mereka masih tiga puluh. He says that um, all of the people here are registered in VKK and uh, their main difficulty is actually arriving in VKK uh, because they're afraid of the terror of being intimidated um, on their way to VKK and in VKK. He said that if the Indonesian police were actually neutral or if they were definitely neutral, they wouldn't feel so um, afraid and terror and intimidated. Um, so because of that, they have very little uh, confidence in the security. Commandos, Commandos, Kapasa, see, well, there's, there's rumors that um, on the 31st, 1st and the 2nd, um, they'll put into motion an action to um, sweep through this area and attack these posts that they have created, these small posts, and they're worried about that. Yeah, so the people, they would speak Portuguese. <coughs> and I don't think what happens is this guy spoke Malay and Trevor spoke Malay. And then the last encampment. I'm Susan, I'm an accredited UN observer from the United States. <laughs> and I bring the people in East Timor democracy. He was a gentleman. And it was the same story pretty much everywhere. Everybody was concerned about what would happen if they went into town on the day to vote. Would they um, expose themselves to security risk? Oh yeah, and on the way home we stopped in a coconut grove. And uh, had some coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> That's excellent. What did he do? Crossed himself. This guy just free climbed up an enormous <laughs> tree. Well, the camera doesn't do it justice, but it was so tall. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fruits of the earth. Wow. Oh. Great, uh, thank you very much. Six months at one time, and three times though he was captured in in, in all it was one year. Wow, long time. Long time. Oh my God. Karena sampai sampai ini kita masih register untuk independensi. Mhm. Mm so he said like before, um, the Indonesians always claim that since they've come that the people have lots of rice and lots of food, but um, actually before they before they lived the better. Before. Ini kita datang itu kita makan nasi, bukan tujuh puluh lima. Before 1975, they had rice too, and it wasn't the Indonesians that brought it. <laughs> in 1975. Mm -hmm. and way back in 1945, they had the same standard of living as they have now. The same, it's the same life. Orang Australia sini. Namanya John Lewis. The father, his father, his grandfather has stories about how they helped the Australians hide in this area and move throughout the side. Yeah, that was in World War Two. And the island was occupied by the Japanese from 42 to 45.
and then we parted ways with our guides and they went one way and we went the other. <laughs> and three tired volunteer observers make their way home. And this is a church from which came beautiful scene. And next will be um, a series of vision from the actual referendum day.